Singapore-based artificial intelligence startup Scream had already ventured into South Africa when the COVID-19 pandemic hit. We kind of flipped to our contact tracing platform, which we developed uh, based on some work we're doing in, uh, in the US for the, uh, for the US government. And we built a COVID-19 tracking and tracing platform, and then we introduced it to some of the companies which are working for the South African government in contact tracing. The next step for the company, the ability to predict where the next outbreak will be. We are just in the process of building out the contact tracing into more of a pandemic early response, which we will absolutely want to roll out. Scream is one of many Singapore companies riding the digital wave in Africa. Of the projects that we have facilitated this year, almost 60% have actually been in the digital space. There is a great respect and regard for technologies that are emanating from Singapore. The continent is embracing going digital. According to the African Development Bank, 20% of its 1.4 billion population owns mobile accounts. 80% of small and medium-sized enterprises also own mobile accounts, which allow them to make digital payments. They straight leapfrog to the mobile. Uh, uh, but only about 35 to 40% of those mobile phones, even today, are smartphones. Uh, and I think the as you get more cheap uh, mobile phones and so on, smartphones, that again will increase. The mobile phone opened up opportunities for banking, money transfers and payments on the continent. Mobile payment systems like M-Pesa have become a way of life for Africans in Kenya and other areas. Kenya was the first country in the world, along with South Africa, to have payments on the mobile phone. So right now, people are actually getting paid directly onto their mobile phone, and they are actually transferring money to their families if they're kind of migrant workers, which of course is, you know, a, a large part of African life. FinTech is only one area of tech growth. We see huge opportunities for Singapore firms that are providing solutions, be they fintech solutions, edtech solutions, health tech solutions, or even solutions that are related to track and trace um, um, situations. There will also be opportunities as the world moves towards a greener environment. Investors say resource-rich Africa has the minerals needed for the batteries in electric vehicles. The challenge is to mine these resources in a sustainable manner. Are you going to invest into miners who do that mining in a socially responsible way? Are they going to use solar power or wind power rather than diesel generators? Are there a fleet of trucks which is going to transport the minerals and materials from the mine to its port or whatever destination? Is that going to be a fleet of electric vehicles or is that going to be fossil uh, trucks? Are you employing child labor or, or you're, you're completely banning that? Are you playing your employees well? Are you uh, developing uh, the local uh, uh, skill set? Africa is looking to grow in a way that doesn't compromise the environment. If you look at the amount of installed capacity and generation, it's uh, abysmally low in most places. Now the question is, as you build more capacity, um, are you going to do it using coal or are you going to use it, uh, uh, produce it using uh, more sustainable solar or wind? So if you look at agriculture, more sustainable agriculture, uh, smart agriculture, whether it is in terms of irrigation or going the right crops, uh, or even uh, conservation of water, uh, preventing desertification, and so on. In this area, Singapore can export its expertise in urban sustainability solutions to the continent. Africa 
is the fastest urbanizing region in the world. And there's going to be a huge demand for smart building solutions, smart city planning, and the technologies that go around with that. Singapore is among the top 10 investor economies in Africa. Other big investors include the Netherlands, the UK, France, China, and the United States. Trade between Singapore and Africa has also been growing steadily over the past five years, except for a 4.7% dip in 2020. The African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement will provide more opportunities for collaboration and growth. We see opportunities for local production, for manufacturing to be done in Africa for the African population. So companies that are in the business of producing goods, food products, electronics, or providing services that support manufacturing, so plant design, engineering design, plant equipment supply, uh, logistics, all of this uh, will see opportunities in the years going forward. One of the world's last frontier markets, Africa still presents many opportunities for investors. It's open, meaning that there's relatively less competition there. There's still room for new entrants. And that means Singapore firms, be they large or small, have the space to play.